All right, wing of the heart ceremony. I'm gonna check my blood pressure. Been moving kind of fast, actually. Been sitting down for the last couple of minutes. This is the new school right here, wing of the heart ceremony. Breathing to the heart. Imagine the color red, fire, love, lungs, happiness, white, liver, green, acceptance, kidneys, black, courage, spleen, yellow, patience and wisdom. Breathe out. And smile. Red, white, green, black, and yellow. Collect all those colors at the Lord Dantian and let them spawn. Perfect. 137 over 87. Well, it ain't perfect, but it ain't high. 130 over 80 is normal. That's good. I ain't gonna take it one. I was talking. It's, it's all right. The um the feather was not outweighed by the heart, so and it's not going to eat my <laughs> my heart, right? I don't know. Maybe so if I go to sleep and ate too much, overeating and and rest thoughts or something. Dreams been pretty cool though. Okay, we will begin. I'm on. This way. Everyone can see the screen. I'm sure. Correct. Yeah. So this is our chemistry of man. This will have been going over, you know. So all this is all committed. Well. It's Coptic and Metamnetum, but it's uh, all made to tie together a chem dart or shrine to put it into the sea to be unknown, to be ignorant, to overthrow or destroy. That's chem. Ash, it's, ash, it's the tone, seat, habitat, habitation, or home. So I sit basically on um, the, the tone. It also means many, multitude, to behold. Ray, a door opening mouth, a chapter of mysteries, or worms. You know, worms don't mean you know, intestinal worms, and then take worms, not like that, basically. DNA or the, se the semen. Man means daily. So, our chemistry of man or our chemistry mind. Uh, to daily tie together the chapters of mysteries that are known and not known. So that's what um, that's what alchemy is basically about. It's the art of manipulation or, or the alteration of energies and the transformation of self, the dark power of force. So alchemy also means all means force or power. Chem means black or dark. So it's the black power, it's the dark power or dark energy. So this dark energy is alchemy, right? So dark energy, basically, we spoke on it last week. Um, that was like the last session. It's the study the principles of energy, dark energy, dark matter. Dark energy commences the movement of dark matter. Dark energy is what is this night world? They say is like a, a while it was sixty, no seventy-two percent, but past three, four years, five years. It has decreased to 69, 68%. So it has now developed into uh, more dark matter and also baryonic matter or stars, suns, and or suns, or cosmic or debris, solaric debris, um, comets, meteors, and moons, and whatnot, what, what have you. These, uh, this dark energy is what accelerates the growth of the universe in the physical sense. The dark energy is the unknown, it's the unseen. 
um, it's uh, basically the non-material or the immaterial. It's, it's the stuff that creates the physical stuff. It is the in-between time and the, in the uh, meantime, you know what I'm saying? It's what is it's not seen yet is seen. So it's, it's the representation or the representation of spirit or intelligence into the physical you known reality that we participate with day to day as we observe it on our walk and journey. So that dark energy is the alchemy too as well. And that is to daily tie together the chapters of mysteries that are known and unknown. The chapter of mysteries are basically the DNA. Um, th those are the programs within our organic computer. The DNA holds all the information from my past, present, and future. There's nothing that is left out. All is in one. All is point of zero. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, how everything is situated into a no time or no thing. Well, we have a interpretation of what time is that's linear based on a cycle of so the hour through the day and everything, 24 hours in, in a whole day, seven days in a week. That's an interpretation, 12, 12 months and everything, but really in reality, true reality, ultimate reality, whatever you want to call it, um, Time is non-existent. It seems to be something going on, but in re in the true nature of who we are, as far as the, um, get to it a little bit, as far as the hologram is concerned, it's only light interpretation. So everything that we are participating with is an interpretation of our observation, and that's collapse. That's what they call in physics collapsing the wave function. But, you know, basically that wave is um, a wave potential that has not yet been set or molded into a specific arena or area of uh, physical life until we observe it and we give it that function as far as being a particle or atom or molecule or whatever, you know, a cell. But then it, as it develops, we put growth onto it by adding more light and water to it. But it comes from an infinite vast ocean or sea of intelligence or, or or waves. But these waves are not like waves of water. Of course, you know, it's not like wave, that type of wave. It's a wave of, of this is like a thought wave. It's a vibration of frequency that has uh, the potential to be whatever, you know. And within that frequency is high and low, you know, what we call long waveforms, short waveforms. And I, I wrote, I've wrote, written some more, de you know, more in detail down here, notes. So we'll just uh, start out. Um, let's wait and see if anyone else will drop in. Drop zone. Yeah, it should be illegal though. Yeah, you know that. It is illegal. It's a territory territory. Peace. No, I don't know. What the fuck was it? It is illegal. Peace. Yo, what's good? We just started. What is it, Elohim? Yeah, it is. What's up with you, bro? I'm Peace. How you doing? Who this? Yo, Yo this is uh, Ox. This is Iain Peace. On the conference, bro. What's up with you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm glad you got your Yeah, man, I had to call and see what's up, man. Uh, we just now jumped on, so, uh, you know, you, you're welcome to stay in and, and get, get what you can. And if you have any questions, go ahead, you know, and, you know pose them to me or whatnot. Yeah, you know me, I'm going to sit back and listen with respect. That's true. <laughs> Respect to you too as well, hey, man. Oh yeah. All right. Um. Today we we talk. We're gonna speak on. We're gonna touch on the studying. We're studying the nature of time and creation. As we were just speaking a few minutes ago, um, we look at time from a linear perspective, not really from 
where it's generated from. It, it's not it's not a, a cycle. Well, we call it uh, circadian. It's not in a cycle either. Time is at a still point. It's um point zero or well, point of singularity zero time. Time is now. As we were just, I was just talking like uh, talking about how uh, the our chemistry of man today they tie together the chapter of mysteries that are known and unknown to mysteries are the DNA. You know, so well, you know, as far as the chapter of mysteries, some of our innate abilities or our X, you know what I'm saying, is what is unknown, X being the chromosome, X and Y chromosomes, X also the variable in um Mathematics that means the unknown, but um, seeing that these mysteries are unknown and known, unknown and known, we have the opportunity to alchemically, um, as it says right here, manipulate or alter the energies of dark power or dark energy, which is basically 68% of the universe right now that has been manipulated from 72 in the past four years, since the last time I looked at the so-called statistics on the whatnot, that um, we had that opportunity and ability to move that energy by way of dark matter, energy matter, into physical existence. That's manifestation, mind, you know, through the mind. So dark energy, dark matter. Dark energy is basically that energy that moved over the face of the earth the beginning of creation they say and uh when it moved over the face of the earth uh and all that it developed or it multiplicity and through multiplicity it developed all things in existence and that undifferentiated energy matter or the undifferentiated dark energy and dark matter differentiated or separated from its natural state into what we have now as our physical reality in the universe universally speaking on the other side of the universe, this dark energy is coming through by way of all chemical expressions, the auto manipulation of energy. And that is who we are. I mean, in actuality, we're not really here. We're gonna get into that too. Uh, basically, that's based on the on, on the premises of being a of a, a hologram, you know, a hologram or horugram. Horu, horu means light and gur and gur means um, silent and am means the mind or brain basically so the silent brain or the light from the silent brain and that that could be um, determined or deciphered as um, meditation or just being still or the point of singularity the time is now or zero time so when we speak on the time is now we look at the cuneiform cuneiform is a uh, where which um vocabulary is basically Sumerian script, but it's the actual letters within Sumer Sumerian but cuneiform. Right here, the N would be a snake or seed. The O is eyes, and the W is hook. So that would the sentence would be the seed that hooks the eyes or the eye. So what that means is talking about the DNA once again, or the um, Kundalini energy, the sacral um, nerves, um, Ida and Pangala, but the seed or the DNA um, is also reflecting on Washita Simatwai, the um, the name of the um, yoga system that um, Washita, the United Washita is developing, still in the, in this processing right now, but N O W now, the time is now. It always is and always will be, you know, staying in that pristine moment, that powerful moment of potential of, of your true nature. So now, N-O-W is the seed or the snake, the serpent that hooks the eye, that adjoins the eye. So Washita Simitwai means um, the power serpent or the, the snake that goes up and unites both sides. Semi twai sima semi or sima twai sima means um um basically to unite and tawi means both lands or the two lands. 
So Simatai means to unite the two lands and Washita means the power of the serpent, the serpent power that goes up. So that's similar to the time is now. We get, the time, time can be defined in different um, manners as well. We're gonna get into that, but if you look at the word um, time, Tim, Tim or Atim, Tim is the deity that is the non-deity, meaning a non-being or no thing. Tim also means complete or incomplete. So it has a, a negative and a positive um, discernment as far as in this definitive. But Tim is where we get the word Adam from and also Adam. Atim meaning um, basically to be complete. But then we go into Adam or Atom Ra, and Atom Ra is the deity of the nine. The nine is 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 the nine, you know, the sons of uh, the sons of Ra or Atom Ra. Uh, that would be the sons and daughters of Atom Ra. That would be um, Shu, um, Tefnut, um, Newt, Geb. Asir, Isis, um, Set, Nepetis, and Haru. Those are the children of the Most High, so to speak. But in retrospect, basically, that's the eight and one, uh, from one to two to four to eight. But that's the blastula cells as well. Um, and from an inner reality, because all things as a result from the physical reality, all things uh, originate from the inner reality. The result is what we see. What we're really looking at is non-existent. It's not the zero time. It's not the point of singularity. The complete and non-complete or the non-thing, the no thing is not here like to talk about. The higher consciousness, true self. That's next session. We, 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 uh, this is supposed to be the last session. It's Friday the 13th class. I hope, like I said, I hope everybody having fun on Friday the 13th. It's all good. I got my red and black candles lit right now. Red and black representative of uh, Shua Ledlow. Also, you know, red is uh, for activity and action, movement. Black is for protection. So it's the same thing or, or to ward off any negative energies. So it's the same as... Um, the sure leg will to open up the way. So protecting at the same time, bringing in the energies uh, that you are, um, are seeking, you know, but of course these are the principles and forces. There's no deity out there named uh, Ashua leg It's just the force is the energy that we are connected to internally inside of our own self. So by way of thought and mind, we can um, activate certain potentials that's, floating around within that um, wave function, you know what I'm saying? And then it pops out into the particle of expression as uh, we move or manipulate by way of alchemy and transform ourself. Self is re related to self, you know what I'm saying? Knowledge of self. Consciousness, the word consciousness means basically to come into knowledge. You know, uh, sci sci or scion or scion means knowledge or to know. And um, con means to come, so it's to come into knowledge. We're going to speak on consciousness in the future, but we have a misconception of what consciousness is as far as in reality, we think of consciousness to be, you know, something that's high standard in thinking. Everything is conscious. A, a, you know, a bird is being is conscious that it wants something to eat. You know, a grass is conscious that some water got through on it. So everything has conscious where we... As humans, we tend to put ourselves on a different plateau of consciousness than any other creation within the mechanism of our, of our doing, of our manipulation of the energies. We have um, certain abilities, but all is all. You know, we are no higher than the shit that we come from. And if y'all ain't listen to the brother Jamal, he be dropping it on uh, Tiff and Tricks Tuesday. He really broke down the aspect of metaphysics and occultism um, last week. So you check that out on, on, on Dr. Aleem Masuro Obey's page. He really put it put it in there 
about how well shit basically shots means mystery as well means darkness means ignorant but as well but basically that darkness that shot that shit is what generates life you know what i'm saying you put that uh you put that melanin on there that dark energy that darkness shit you know what i'm saying you put that on there next thing you know you're cultivating and you're bringing about new a new generation of uh in existence but that that's the transmutation, transformation of self, self, self. You know what I'm saying? So you got we gotta go through certain things in order to know certain things. The only way you can know something is to experience it. You gotta know bad, evil, whatever they call it in the human perspective to know what it really is. It's not bad or evil, it's your choice. That's when we get into um the observation and participation of ourselves within this mechanism, within the energies of what we call a hologram or who we go around. All right, so we're going to study the nature of time and creation. The time is now, zero time. This is the Edomai, old English, get to mind to happen, to befall. So to fall, time means to fall or to fall, to happen. So what happened, we fell from a higher existence, so to speak, we want to say it's higher, but we fell from our natural state into a artificial type of reality, into a, a, a fixated, captivating reality that is uh, dominating our, um, is actually dominating and it's also somewhat usurping our natural abilities due to the experience we chose to do these things so we could have a um the experience but also have like a scientific observation when you're a scientist that means you want to be able to go through an experiment so we put an experiment on ourselves to see how powerful we can come out on the other end of that um, alchemical process all right so also it uh Timo, limited space of time. Timon, time. Timi, time, proper time. Limited space of time. Time and space, time and space. Um, an hour. Then right here, proto or uh, Indo European demon. Suffix root, form of root. Suffix form of root. Die means to cut up or divide. So divide the mind. Mind means a mind. D means to divide. Also, a moon. Who? What was divided in the Pertamaru or the um, book of so-called Book of the Dead by Egyptologists? Osir. Osir was divided into fourteen pieces. That's the that's the Nubian. That is the original man divided into fourteen pieces, and uh, all his pieces or all the pieces of the Nubian was uh, fragmented and placed all over the. The universe or the planet Earth, however you want to speak, but it that would be based on multiplicity, from one to two to four to eight, you know what I'm saying? So that C was divided and came into the physical reality of what we call time, you know what I'm saying? Time now as we know it, but that demon, demon, you know what I'm saying? But that is, of course, not demon, but dominant. It's the same thing, but then we go into diamond. So what does the diamond do over time? It's developed from a piece of coal. As Dr. Alim teaches, he says, uh, the diamond, like the black man or the Nubian has went through, has been oppressed, oppressed, and up and oppressed. So diamonds or a diamond is produced by pressure. So when that coal has been um has been uh, moved around and been a, a, a large amount of pressure has been placed upon it, it goes through the process of coming down. And when we look in deep into our genetics or into our, um, mel the, um, I guess you could say the melanin molecule, you will see that there are, they are connected by nanodiamonds. Each molecule is formed by what is called nanodiamonds. And these nanodiamonds are minute structures that are even more fine than um, the 
I guess like 10 times more finer than mm -hmm. I want to say it wrong. Let me go up here to the first part real quick. Yes, our, our neuromelanin is just it's, it's like the subtle, subtle movement refers to what, to what, to that which occurs within the body. Uh, that's not it. Oh, here we go. Below the surface and rolling. Their critical role along the other interstellar gas clouds at the formation of stars and also through, this is talking about nano diamonds. Um, it is worth noting in this context that the composition of a molecular precursor in the solar nuclear favors the condensation of carbon, carbonaceous compounds known in cosmology as nanodiamonds. This is favored by an abundance of atomic hydrogen and low carbon ratios. These black nanodiamonds created by intense heat and enormous pressures are extreme, intense heat and enormous pressures are extremely small anywhere from 10 to 1,000 times smaller than interstellar grains. There you go. Anywhere from 10 to 1,000 times smaller than interstellar grains. Their critical role along with other interstellar gas clouds is the formation of stars and also through complex chemical processes, the creation of biogenetic molecules of melanin in the interstellar clouds of many galaxies. It is these black nanodiamonds along with amino acids that seed the galaxies and the planets with life if they ride on the surface of traveling meteors through the abyss. This is panspermia. All right, so this is where our DNA is formed from. This is where our molecules, cells, atoms, everything, all that. Uh, but basically, that's that dark energy, the black diamonds. It's right there, say right there. What does that say right there? 10 to 1,000 times smaller than interstellar grains. So the interstellar grains is basically the dark matter, but we all know that dark energy moves, you know, and then that vibration of movement, it starts forming the matter or the dark matter, which is uh, basically what they say is 22% of the universe right now. 68% of the universe is dark energy, 22 is dark matter, and um, the remaining 5% is the um, baryonic matter, physical matter, like the cosmic, so the cosmos, I mean, the um, comments and things like that. That's what flew down on. Life flew down on that. Landed in the planet on the planet Earth yesterday and created us today. <laughs> Formed us today. Hold up. Energy transference. You know. Let's get back to this though. My bad. I just didn't want to give you the wrong um, information on that. Make sure <laughs> I was saying it right. If you have any questions, you can put it in chat or um, scream at me. Chat might be better. Oh, I'm going to pass. Okay. Somebody go ahead and touch me. All right. Um, what was it? Right here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about our chemistry. Yeah. All right. So studying, studying the nature of time and creation. So we're doing the edamon, some demon. Is um, cut up or divide to divide the mind. So we divide the mind into 12 different um, astrological signs, the 12 cranial nerves. And then we have eons within those 2,160 years. And then we have the great session in that 26,000 year process where we are at now in this uh, Sita 
It's called the Sieta Age, coming out of Cali Age, the age of uh, separation, when all things were, when, when all things in creation, so to speak, in this multiplicity were separated. Now we're coming back to a place of unity when all things are back and joined into what we call, I call, well, I don't call, this is what physics calls zero time, point of singularity, but also the now time. So connecting that Kundalini energy, like Kali, which is a physical energy, back to the top, you know what I'm saying? So to connect both sides, the unknown with the known. The unknown will be the other side of the universe where this energy is being emitted from. The known is what we know as the holographic universe, what we see and participate with, but it's only a hologram from a, from a two-dimensional um, reality. That two-dimensional reality in the physical sense within the human structure will be our, our um, soul. Basically, it's the black dot, what they call the black dot. And that is what we are producing in, in the techniques of the Tai Chi meditations and uh, the Qigong. You will find that by utilizing your personal energy, you will, in time, no thing, well, we ain't got that far, but you will in time develop a sense of your mecca bar. And that's those two energies connecting and combining and uniting or whatnot and being able to form a structure that is visible by you. It's always it's there already. Your mecca bar is there. Just when you wanna when you wanna tap into it sometimes it just don't seem present, like to talk about. Some people don't even know it course but no one is having battle so applications not just theory I'm not just theorizing this either um, I've, I've went through it and I've actually you know, participated with the energy and I've, I've seen the black dot uh, and I've, I've watched it float around and shit it's cool stuff but I don't really talk about it too much you know what I'm saying that takes away from the energy all right but um to develop it and to uh Act, to activate it and to be able to participate with it day to day, it takes time, so to speak, you know what I'm saying, and deliberate cognitive disciplines is like what I call it, DCD, but that's all in one day, you know what I'm saying, muscle memory, basically, you get to that zero point, you're going to always do that, that certain thing every day to where it's going to keep that melanin, like I say, or, you know, get black. It's going to keep that melody intact and it's going to keep it flowing from the unknown to the known. You know what I'm saying? Because we ain't even really here right now. This is, a third, this is a third dimensional reality that's based on the interpretation of light being introduced to a two-dimensional reality. The light reality is um, the fifth dimension. The fourth dimension is time space. That's the mental plane. You know what I'm saying? The third dimension is the physical reality. So that light moves through the mind time and space and develops off of the template of the dark reality of that two-dimensional flat surface, the third dimension in between the light, time, space, and the second dimension. So that second dimension is your black dot. That's that, that Bindu dot. That's that thing that came into the Bindu spot, the soft spot of our head when we were born and settled into the pineal gland. And then it moved on down to finally, you know, we went through the whole body. It's like each chakra is basically a reflection or each um, spiraling wheel or or that, that uh, I call them eye of the needles, is a reflection of that um, first black dot or that the first cell. You know what I'm saying? That flat surface then absorbed the light and sound frequencies of mother and father and was developed into a three-dimensional entity that we call the baby. And also all these other physical things that's out here, they all babies. <laughs> they need a little nurturing. Oh, ain't she sweet? Look at that cup of water. Ain't it sweet? Need a little nurturing. I'm going to hug that water. Give some love. Get a little back. You know, get black. Do right by God. God do right by her. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Um, so went from that abstract sense time is an indefinite continuous duration but they show time by 
the dude right there, the old man, Tom. I got the picture. I didn't even put it up. Let me see. It'd be right here. Bada boom, bada bang, bada bam. Where you go? Where you go? There you go. Old man time. And you know we in the year 2017. Sight. Got that right there. That's that seven right there. Ten means again what? Complete or incomplete. Incomplete or complete. And when we we, we add up the numbers 20 and 17, we get 10. 10 is the number of completion. That, that sift right there. And the hourglass. Hourglass is also representative of the high and low. High and low, talking about the Merkel bar again. You know what I'm saying? And then when one is complete, you're talking about Tim or time, not talking about linear time, you know, see saying all this confusion and stuff we in. We talk about how not being divided, but bringing all the pieces of us here back together, those 14 pieces, bringing it back together. You know, today is the 13th of uh, Friday the 13th, 13th of January. You got one in 13 equal 14. You know what I'm saying? And this shift, sight seed or whatever this right here is reaping. It's after we have planted the seed, you know what I'm saying? That now, the seed is now, the end, you know what I'm saying, of man, M-A-N, the seed of man, man meaning again, Mem, Alif, Noon, and he break. Oh, so Mim is water or mother, basically. Alif is the father, but that's the uh, that's the leader. And Noon is the seed. And also fish or snake. All right, but all of them are allegorical to different um, energies as well. So blood is the is the woman. Um, power is the uh, masculine energy. And the seed is the, um, the sun, it's M-A-N. But when we're looking at it like right here, we in the now time. See that seven right there, that two, one. There's all type of shit going on. I just found a picture. I was like, yeah, it's 2017, but yeah, it's cool. But um, we're reaping now. We're reaping what we've sown. So if we have put anything out there that we did not necessarily, um, well, you know, it's, it's all good, everything good. No putting, everything that we experience, we should treat it equally. That's how we should look at life in general. We should not be like, oh, the greatness, or I love this. This is just the funnest part of my life. All of it is, everything is everything, you know what I'm saying? Once we start saying one thing is better than the other thing or one thing is worse than another thing, then we done went back into the humanistic state of mind. You know what I'm saying? We're going away from being the, the actualizer of our creation or whatever and giving the power back to some emotion is external. So to utilize your energy properly, always remember to transition it or to convert it, you know what I'm saying, by way of that, like the uh, inner smile techniques where instead of being angry, accept it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being uh, sad, be happy. Instead of having hate, be, have love. You know, because all these external energies out here are going to generate a fear conscious, you know what I'm saying, or, or fear reality. So it's, it's good to, if you we do get angry, don't store the anger. You know, if you got to act out, act out. Just let it go. That's your choice. That's your decision. But if you want to, you know, reserve it and be like, I'm going to convert this into some other stuff. So I, I might need that energy later on. I don't need to whip your ass right now, because that would be, I might get, I might get my ass whooped, you know what I'm saying, ain't no telling, you know, it ain't about fear either, but we got to, you know, look at it objectively, but really subjectively, you know what I'm saying, got to look at the deeper core root of where this thing can grow to, you know what I'm saying, if we put too much a negative energy on something, 
then when we need that positive energy, we didn't utilize or we didn't spend too money out, too much money out of our bank account. And then when we go back to get some more money out that bank account, we we in debt now. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't utilize too much of this negative energy. So energy is energy. It ain't negative or positive. But in the, again, the humanistic state of mind and our personality, our ego, we tend to um, regard certain things and certain qualities. So when we do want to go back and get um, like some whatever it may be to manifest or to actualize into the physical you know, arena, a little bank account going to be dry. You know what I'm saying? So converting that energy is good. Hour to hour. You know what I'm saying? But Who's who's Haru? Haru is the light, you know. So that light is the fifth dimension, so to speak, and it's developing the Haru ground. So Haru, and not talking about time as it is right now. I'm talking about time as it was and as it always will be. I mean, the time as it is right now is kind of complicated and confusing to the mainstream or the masses, you know, because they they're dealing with uh, they're dealing with the schematic, the schematics of time that is controlling. So we gotta wake up at a certain time, get to work or school by a certain time, get off of work or school by a certain time, pick so and so up, drop them off, you know, eat at a certain time, take a shit, take a bath at a certain time. All these things are re re regulated by this calendar, and we look at the calendar just like a prison cell. So we gotta we put ourselves into these brackets on this calendar, and we get caught up in that box all over again. You know, so sometimes, you know, we just got to like, just, I'm going to take a break today. I'm going to rest or I'm not going to participate with this, this energy today because it just ain't fitting like, you know, Super Bowl energy or, you know, those type of things right there. Fourth of July energy. I mean, if, if you're going to deal with the ritual, do it on your own or maybe a couple of days later or before or something like that, because, you know, that is a 13 day period from the summer solstice and everything in, inside of that July 14th, um, the, that personifies is from our indigenous uh, state of mind within the mystery systems of, of, uh, of Africa or Afrikan. So we developed that, those rituals, all the rituals that we participate with from through Thanksgiving to Easter was developed in Africa and it was all based on cycles of the sun and different represent or representations of cultivating our seed within and without as far as vegetation is concerned on the external like with Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, the sun going down and Christmas on the 21st, three days, so-called, you know, uh, going into hell or whatever, but that's the uh, Southern Cross within the solar, I mean, within the astrological sense in the constellations, but it, it goes down, then it comes back up on the 24th and then we celebrate on the 25th as far as Christmas is concerned. But that, that energy in all those days, Easter and all that is based on certain activities that we participated with in, the, in that day. And you know what I'm saying? They have uh, relocated it now in this time and this, uh, you know, this um, manipulation of time to where we are being controlled by time instead of being at one with time, you know what I'm saying, in our creation process or our forming of our true reality, true self, they have taken, uh, well, they have usurped somewhere. They haven't really taken, now I'm saying they, but these are littles or the ones that know that energy is energy and can be used anyway and they know that there's no evil or good. It's just what the fuck they want to do. You know what I'm saying? We get caught up in those emotions, and they don't. You know, they, they, they ain't even looking at this shit. They have them. They rich. You know, they making money in the backyard, literally. You know what I'm saying? So they ain't caring about what's going on in the block. On the block in the hood, they don't care about that. They ain't looking at this shit. They just looking at their, their, paint, their, uh, their, their pocketbook. Oh, look at my wallet. <laughs> yeah. But they ain't thinking about what's going on. They playing a video game. They having fun. You know what I'm saying? And they, it's all, they playing a video game so hard that they so addicted to it. They ain't getting up out of that chair. How many, how many heart um, transplants has Rockchild had? That nigga like 108 years old. He ain't got no nose. He ain't got no eye. <laughs> Look like that dude off that movie with Dan Urquhart. Uh, same thing, was whatever Tupac was in and out in the digital, what, digital underground. I can't remember the name of the movie. But like that dude, 
he don't look real. Uh, at any rate, um, getting to this read. So, all things and events initiate from elemental energy matter, dark energy, dark matter, the subjective realm, zero point, which is in essence the void of forms and structures. There are no physical objects. This is due to the fact that its energy is in a state of calmness or perfect harmony and permanence. It's a permanent state. You know what I'm saying? It's perfect harmony. There's no chaos. Movement comes into being at the demand of time. Time is the structure apportioning of things, the place for manifesting and expressing themselves given the fact that no two things can occupy the same space at the same time. That's similar to what we saw about with the positron and the electron or um, antimatter and matter. Um, the electron having the negative charge and the positron having the positive charge, when they come together and collide, they form pure energy because two things can't exist at the same place at the same time. So when they meet, they explode, bam, and form pure energy. They go, they, they almost exist at, at, at paramountly. Well, they do exist at the same time, but then within that same instance, they, destroy each other and then form pure light or enlightenment. And that's the process of alchemy as well. When those two energies, big bang come together, they form the Mecca ball. One side of the energy goes the one way and the other side goes the other way. And then it's an orb in between. And that orb is what holds both together. See our orb is a heart, but in this reality, our heart right now is on the frequency of fear. So everything that if you look at if you if you look at a glass and you want to be a or a mirror and you want to be able to see yourself, if it's cracks in that mirror going all the way through it, you're not gonna be able to see yourself properly. So in, in uh scientists that studied it, I was talking, we spoke on it last week, but scientists studied the heart frequencies, the electromagnetic or the bioelectromagnetic frequencies of the heart, and they saw with negative emotions, when they saw the frequency when they read read the frequencies. The negative emotions produce rigid, jagged edges like earthquakes all over the the um their um heroic field, if you want to call it, but the bioelectromagnetic field. And when this um harmonics that was that's called um that was called uh, um incoherent spectra. Uh harmonic spectra is when we have heartfelt feelings of love and generosity, appreciation, you know, very affectionate type of love that's that are generally um um, from from that the well love you know versus fear the only two emotions are love and fear that everything else generates out of those, all those feelings but those that um, fear this fear based reality produces a jagged type of um, representation within the frequencies of the bioelectromagnetic field and that will be uh, somewhat allegorical to not being able to see oneself. So if all this energy is coming in through that orb or through those two points. And when we had that mirror or that orb and we're holding it up and looking at ourselves and we want to see that mirror image properly, it's been mud smudged onto that mirror where we can't see the actualization of our true self, which would be pretty much nothing again, because that's time. But basically they have put something up there, but that was, what we see in is scaring us and frustrating us because it's not the true nature of ourselves. Alright. Okay, so let me get back to the read. Uh, movement comes into being at the demand of time. Time is the structure. Everything good. Time is the structured um proportioning of things. The place for manifesting and expressing themselves given the fact that no two things can occupy the same space at the same time. As matter within zero time has not been controlled or fashioned into physical objects, there is no need for validation of time. So as matter within zero time has not been controlled or fashioned into physical objects, there is no need for the validation of time. This state of harmony is the primordial energetic link to our spirit or intelligence. That's the DNA again. So when we get caught up on um, what happened yesterday, and we get caught up on what's going to happen tomorrow, 
we lose the energy or the spirit to be able to activate the intelligence within right now in our now time due to the fact there is no state of harmony when we're talking about yesterday and, and thinking on tomorrow too much what happens is frustrations and or either we're so caught up on a, a happy moment or maybe a, a sad moment whatever the case may be we're not dealing with the staying in the moment um, um, reality or revelation that should be um, bringing about that exchange of energy within those uh, within our uh, natural existence, within our innate abilities, you know what I'm saying? So in the committed tradition, this is called Hatep, inner peace. To achieve this inner peace, we must return to the focal point, we return the focal point of our intelligence to zero, the spirit of no thing. This is in essence the highest level of meditation. It is not a peace that is reliant on external circumstances such as money, friends, or love life. It is also not inciting on, on neglect of responsibilities of fleeing from the cares and troubles of the world. This internal peace allows one to take part in life with the inner connection and self-sufficient calmness, as well as self-knowledge of contacting and being connected to the root of all divine power. That's the dark energy, dark matter. In general, the majority of people's quest for happiness is to push for, my bad, I put that on there twice, huh? is to push for protection and emotional fulfillment. In truth, there is no thing more secure than the attainment of divine power. You know, so we, we go to church, we're looking for security through the Lord. Uh, we go to, um, to the police officer, we're looking for security through the police. We go to our, our wife, a significant other, we look for emotional fulfillment through that. We go to the refrigerator or McDonald's, we look for emotional fulfillment through that or by, by way of money. We think we're going to be protected or emotionally fulfilled through that. If we don't have knowledge of self, basically it's all stemming or rooting from knowledge of self. Lack of knowledge of self requires one to go outside of the self to seek these physical um, objects. When in, in actuality, if you have knowledge of self, you know that these physical objects can be obtained, but you're not going to put all your power and effort into obtaining those physical things and be, and kill yourself over it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to allow your natural self, your innate abilities to go out there and do that for you. You just, you know, by doing what we do, you know, it might be a ritual or something, put a couple candles in it, add some incense. It might just be a thought, you know, so that thought wave again is basically the wave function. The wave function is a realm of infinite possibilities, infinite potentials. That's the other side of the universe. That's where everything that's here now has been holographically expressed. So that's that, uh, that two-dimensional surface that the universe is being expressed on from no thing that developed this something. So if we can connect back to that nothing, Tim, then that aspect of our reality, that divine power, divine abilities, or whatever we want to call it, will start to flourish more thoroughly. But as long as we are focused, or our focal point of energy or emotion, energy and emotion, dark energy and dark matter, is focused on this realm and what we are seeing in front of us as far as stars and moons and all that, that's already been developed. We want new shit. So we have to go to that zero point. Zero point is stilling the mind, is being non-attached to our feelings that are being generated and pretty much controlled by the external reality that is moving within the same realm because it is the dark energy and dark matter. So these littles know how to manipulate the energy for their own embitterment, for their own benefit. So... In order for us to get our shit back right, which is happening regardless, you know what I'm saying? You know, you want to speed it up because it is speeding up. I mean, it went from 72 to 68 in five years or less. So that means that dark energy has accelerated and expanded the holographic universe even more in the past five years. Is it for us? It's been, now we got to look at it, you know, in both realms, but it's not been, it's not a negative or positive thing. Remember that energy, dark energy, dark matter, or what we call Allah or whatever, 
whatever you want to call it, the all, you know what I'm saying? It does not have uh, any feelings like we do as humans. It does not say this is good or this is bad. Um, coming out the dial real quick. Let me see if I can locate it. Uh, I got the page of bookmark, but I'm not sure which one it is. Um, when people see some things as beautiful, other things become ugly. When people see some things as good, other things become bad. Being and non-being create each other. Difficult and easy support each other. Long and short define each other. High and low depend on each other. Before and after follow each other. Therefore, the master acts without doing anything and teaches without saying anything. Things arise and she lets them come. Things disappear and she lets them go. She has but doesn't possess. Acts but doesn't expect. When her work is done, she forgets it. That is why it lasts forever. All right. Also, um, this one right here. The Tao doesn't take sides. It gives the Tao means the ultimate truth. Also means the way. Um, basically, is my eye. So you know, the ultimate truth does not take sides. It gives birth to both good and evil. The master doesn't take sides. She welcomes both saints and sinners. The Tao is like a bellows. It is empty. yet infinitely capable. The more you use it, the more it produces. The more you talk of it, the less you understand it. Hold on to the center. So you hear that right there. The more we use it, the more it produces. But the more we talk about it, the less we understand. That's why I'll be saying, you know, we don't want to talk about all that right there, right there, like that too much. Because then it takes away from that energy from the other side. Because once we start activating that, our physical mind to it or, or, or observing it, it crashes or collapses the wave function. See what I'm talking about? So when we collapse in the wave function, basically what we're doing, we're taking away from the potential of the natural state that it should be going into the wave or, or the energy from the opposite end. So when that shit is supposed to be growing something new or creating something, forming something new, what happens is since we put too much energy towards it or whatever, it deactivates the true nature of what is it's supposed to be, which is anything. And where in light of what anything means is basically what has already uh, been downloaded and also should be uploaded from our DNA. We have every, everything that is in the universe that is known, unknown, and it can't be known is in the um, quantum field or the um, unified field. Basically is noon, is a mentee, uh, the twat, bardo, the subconscious realm. But basically everything that can be imagined that is, has been imagined and that has not been imagined and won't be imagined is within that field. We get caught up on what's already here, what has been imagined or what has been known and seen. So the energy is usurped because there's so much going on. This is the age of information. And like I said, these littles know what's happening. So they, they know that these black holes is running around out here. You know what I'm saying? These melanated beings, we running around out here and we absorbing all light and sound. So they looking at it like, okay, we got to put a little whole big bunch of light and sound on here. So up out here, so they'd be distracted enough not to go back into their internal light and sound. Remember, melanin is a transducer of all energies. So that means we can shift and transmute vibrations into sound. We can transmute or shift, transduce heat into light. So what they did, they developed we developed a long time ago, but they developed this TV, which is basically transducing vibrations in the sound, audio, and heat into light, video. So telecommunications, or, or we're basically not telecommunications, but television, telling lots of our vision is tell, that's to hear or to have audio, and then it's vision, that's to see, and that's, that's visual. So they have fused those two energies together put it in this big box, this flat two-dimensional two, two reality, and that has now transmuted and on, a, on what we would think of as a, a negative sense, our abilities within our own two-dimensional reality to formulate the third dimensional from the state of the two-dimensional coming in by way of the natural light from the fifth dimension and through our mind of space-time. All right, so 
to get back to the read, but um, you know, that's what's taking place in some some retrospects of, of uh, this reality here, not the ultimate reality. The ultimate reality is on the other side. That's where we at in truth. Okay, but this is in essence the highest level of meditation. It's not a piece that is relying on external circumstances. What were we? Okay, yeah, right here. Um, I went through that more secure than so attaining the divine power, attaining that now moment, staying in the moment, the zero point, inner peace. We call it energy matter, energy matter, differentiate undifferentiated matter in the zero point or quantum field, unified field is undifferentiated and has not yet been formed in the physical objects such as stars, planets, etc. So if there is nothing to be identified with, then the hidden light of the intelligence, of the hidden light of the infinite intelligence can only be conscious of being intelligent. This state of being is known as the deity Tim, time or Timu, negative being. In the comedic meditation system and also Asamarajanta Sarvakalpa in Nirvana, Asparajanta, Asparajanata, Sarvakalpa, Nirvana, pure consciousness without objects of consciousness. Knowing that thought is a separation of the undifferentiated energy matter, pure intelligence isn't even thinking. It doesn't have the thought I'm conscious. So with no needs or identity while dwelling within the realm of zero, the hidden plane of reality, where all manifestations are fractionalized portions of the undifferentiated energy matter, this pure intelligence, dark energy, dark matter, began to shift and therefore form an objective physical living reality from the subjective, subjective spiritual life giving reality. Vibration to sound, heat to light. There again, that's melanin. That's what the function of melanin from in a physical sense. But that's also the function of melanin from the spiritual reality as well. You know what I'm saying? It shifts and transduces. It, it is able to manipulate all energies. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if we're thinking about the Big Bang, remember the Big Bang was supposedly hot in the hell, so to speak, or whatever, right? But one aspect of melanin, it can withstand, what, 1,200 degree uh, temperature, Fahrenheit. The Big Bang was supposedly 15 billion degrees, but what was the first thing that came off of the Big Bang is called the first fruits. You know what I'm saying? First fruits is, is uh, basically, that's what they we call it in uh, different uh, schools of thought. But the first fruits are also representative of the 144,000. But these first fruits, Supposedly came off the Big Bang outside that hot heat after it had uh, it had uh, came into that initial spark and then expressed itself out, it exploded. The chief basis for creation is to give intelligence experience. The subjective realm is life. The objective realm is living, being versus doing. Without thought, without experience, this dark energy matter. Creates this dark energy, dark matter creates or differentiated its energy matter into the universe that it may share in the experience of life. So the chief basis for creation is to give intelligence experience, is to give that dark energy, that dark matter, the experience. The subjective realm is life. The subjective realm is the dark energy. It is the dark matter. The objective realm is the living. That's where we at right now. The being versus doing. The being is actually that is that energy, you know what I'm saying, that forms the doing, the physical part. So that that's the knower, the thinker, and the doer. The doer is the physical aspect of the knower. Um, the thinker is the mind. That's where the knower or the dark energy flows through the mind by way of the dark energy, dark matter, formulating into the electrical signals that the doer is representing back out into the physical reality. Remember, all things that we that initiate that we initiate into the physical reality first starts from the inner reality within. We first process it, then we project it back out. As the electrical input goes into the dark space, the dark crevices of our brain or our mind, basically our brain, we interpret those energies through. Uh, do what we call it, to you know what I'm saying? But basically, it's step down information. We interpret those energies, and then we, in that deciphering, we are we a, we're able to transduce that light and sound into a physical reality externally. But first, we process it internally 
and then we project it back out by way of the electrical input. Like, uh, let me see, I'm gonna bring this right here up real quick. It will take a sec. Okay. So we um uh, when we're outside and we we're walking around we're looking at certain things outside, we think if we're looking at oh shit, my bad. We think if we're looking at things outside as is out there, like that's what that is. That's that, you know, we see in the sun, we see in the moon or whatever, but in actuality, what we're looking at is located in a small space in our brain. The visual cortex takes in that light and, lo and relocates it back here, in the medulla oblongata. That's where all memories are stored within that area in the visual cortex. It's a small space right there. So everything we're looking at is an energy, is an electrical input that goes into the brain by way of those other biophotons, like atoms and stuff like that. Even the whole universe is not really out there, it's really in our brain. We send out the signal from my brain through the dark energy, dark matter, and it is emitted back into a three-dimensional fold to where we can participate with it in that sense. I know it sounds kind of strange and weird, you know what I'm saying, but see, that's the eye for rule right there. That's the true eye. We see through this eye right here, where the pineal gland is located, you know what I'm saying? What we think and we see is not really locally. Well, what we think we see is, as locally is not really there. It's assimilation, so to speak. And this can be better understood Right here like this. Hold up. Oh, that's not it. I am sharing this right Yeah. Okay. Let me get back to that other in a second. Oh, where is it? Oh, this might be it. Man. Nope. Oh, here they go. As I was saying, I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Space defined by shape and sound. We as cognitive breathing organisms give physical life to this new unformed, undifferentiated 
um, energy matter, quantum wave, be it as sound and shape or music and mathematics. The study of mathematics was discovered by human technology, not created. We give geometry its meaning by way of vocalizing its arrangement in categories of shapes and sizes. Do not confuse the limit reality and its expression of matter, space, and time. Reality, like matter itself, is, at the end of the day, temporal and transitory. And transitory. The physical properties of reality occupy only three dimensions of height, breadth, and width. Time is another component in the equation of life that when merged with space, it births the fourth dimension of space-time. Space-time can be discerned as a more subtle informational field of the, of the body that has a holographic structure of light and dark matter. The wavelengths or thought patterns of this holographic body carries information that informs our vibrational lower denser physical bodies. Space-time and our bodies interpenetrate each other. We are embedded in multiple dimensions beyond those we can see, touch, hear, smell, and feel. Space and time become a fluid reality within the dream state. It is a form of the fourth dimension of space-time being subconsciously experienced. Time is another component in the equation of life that when merged from space, it bursts the fourth dimension of space-time. Space-time can be discerned as a more subtle informational field of the body that has a holographic structure of light and dark matter. All right, so like I was saying earlier, um, the mind is can be determined as space-time. And when light and dark matter, dark matter coming from the third, I mean, the second dimension, comes in flux with the light from the fifth dimension, it formulates the third dimension as well as the fourth. It is a more subtle information field of the body that has a holographic structure of light and dark matter. Both that dark matter and light coming in to play into the fourth and third dimensions. The wavelengths, but it's a more subtle informational field. Um, the third dimension is a grosser informational field. Right outside of that is the fourth dimension, the or, or the um, aura, the auric field. The wavelengths of or the thought patterns of this holographic body carries information that informs our vibrational lower, um, denser physical bodies. forms to all right got that right that informs the vibration of our lower density physical bodies space time and our bodies interpenetrate each other we are embedded in multiple dimensions beyond those we can see touch hear smell and feel space and time become a fluid reality within a dream state it is a form of the fourth dimension of space-time being subconsciously so experienced. So here, um, space and time become a fluid reality within a dream state. It is a form of the fourth dimension of space-time being subconsciously so experienced. In the dream state, um, when we go to sleep, we have these pictures or images of whatever's in the third dimension, and we take it into the mind state or the mental plane, and we uh, access our ancestral energy but we we see them through we see our um our, some of our um, answers are answered by the ancestor energy within our sleep state when we're looking at these pictures or these images we may think it's a car or whatever but you know that's only due to the fact that that's what's going on in this physical reality it has a deeper more um more um, abstract meaning than what is reportedly speaking on in the dream. You know, you see a truck in the dream that means um, you're carrying the load, or you got a, you got a lot of energy, a lot of force behind you. If there's something on on the back of the truck that means you're carrying the load, you know, you might want to empty some of that out. So stuff like that. It's different things that can be interpreted within the dream. If you see a big building, that means you. Um, advancing in life. If you're going up, if you're climbing a building or a hill, that means you're definitely going up 
you know, you're advancing, you're elevating, but if you're going down a hill, something like that, that means you're going in the wrong direction. So who sees the same level of experience found in the universe as a whole can be found within the soul as well. Um, Let me share this. I'm not sharing this. I'm not sharing this. Let's, let's switch it back up. Oh, yeah. I did. Uh, we, as we know, I spoke on last week. There is a field that exists um, as waves of possibilities that contains an infinite number of what um, physicists call wave frequencies that create this known physical reality. This field is where all particles initiate as waves of potential until they are observed and then they pop out into matter. Let's hold it one second. talking about the single field of intelligence, uh, the hidden light of the infinite intelligence. Yeah, that's what I entitled it. Yeah, that single field, quantum field, uh, unified field, uh, singularity, point of singularity field, the intricate field, no, the implicate order, um, the wave function, the quantum wave function, uh, it's all type of different names. All the particles of the universe, though, um, initiate from this field and they're inside the field they're just ripples of vibrations because then it's an uh, infinite ocean of possibilities within that that field so all matter all forces of the universe originate from this field and um are basically a non-material reality it's, it's a it's a fluid reality of thought waves basically Hmm. Let me check something real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. But inside that field, um, is the foundation of everything. The mind and matter, all forces of the universe originate from that, from that field, that field of immaterial, no thing, Tim, you know what I'm saying? This is a non-material field, again, undifferentiated energy matter, dark energy, dark matter. And basically, all physical um, entities are waves of vibration within this particular ocean of unlimited potential. All right, so who sees, though? Go back to this. Science, uh, before we get to read, science has done a few experiments where they um, they actually hook up test subjects to a PET scan or some type of computer electric, electronic um, scan where they can read the brain waves of, of the test subject. And what... Um, 
scientists would do is they ask them to look at certain objects. And as the, the subject, the test subject looked at the object, the scientists would observe certain areas of the brain that lights up on the PET scan. Then they asked the, the subject to close their eyes and visualize the same object. When they did this, the scientists noticed that the same area of the brain um, that lit up throughout the, through the PET scan was still lighting up, even though they could not actually see. Um, they didn't have the actual object in front of them with their eyes open. That was just visualizing, imagining it in the mind. So when the scientists noticed this, they was like, whoa, they, what, 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 you know, they're a little, you know, they was at all, they was baffled. They was like, hold up. Um, the same area of the brain is lighting up, but they ain't looking at it physically. So what the science had to do, they asked the question, basically, who sees, you know what I'm saying? So do the eyes, the physical eyes see, or does the brain, the physical brain see? You know, is reality what we see with our eyes, or is it what we see with our brain? You know, you know, science, they, they get all confused about little stuff, but basically who is seeing, though? I, then there was another experiment that they had done, a couple of them, um, it's a touch experiment where basically this doctor, Dr. Benjamin Libet, he's a neurophysiologist, he, he was, they were doing, um, performing experiments on patients where they would, um, basically they were doing brain surgery and they would localize antiseptics onto a certain area of the cranium and the brain at the same time. That basically allowed the, the patient to stay awoke and alert so that the doctor could ask them questions. So they wouldn't put them, they wouldn't give them anesthetics to where, anesthetics to where they would um, go to sleep. They would just um, numb the area that they were going to have surgery on, you know, on the brain. And they would cut the brain over the cranium, the pieces of the, uh, the brain, the bone brain, the cranium open. And then they would expose the brain and the doctor would do experiments on the on test subject by asking them questions. Basically, the questions was uh, based on stimulus to certain areas of the brain as well as the hand. So what he would do, he would stimulate um, the finger with a little, he would like poke the finger with a needle and ask the patient when he felt it. And then he would poke the brain in the same area that was associated corresponded with the finger and asked the patient when he felt the sensation there in the brain. So what they thought was that if they, um, you know, they touch the brain, because the brain is where feelings are um, basically, purportedly, is where we feel things from. You know, if, if I hit my hand right here, the brain is supposed to be telling me I hit my hand. Bam. You know what I'm saying? So I, if I punch something, that means if I cut my finger or if I trip up or if I eat something and it touches the tongue, the brain is supposed to be telling me this is what it tastes like or that's what that feels like or whatever. So they did the test and they touched the finger and they asked him when he felt it and, you know, they would think that it would take a couple of seconds for because it's got to go from the finger to the brain. So it would be like a couple of milliseconds or something for the brain to actually, you know, um, basically register the feeling from the finger to the brain but it was instantly that he felt or the, the subject test subject would feel the sensation from the finger you know what I'm saying like okay I felt that as soon as they did it but when they touched the brain it was actually a pause it was um a gap between the time that he felt it in the finger So what does that mean? You know, who sees? Where's the energy coming? Where's the energy initiating from? Where, if the finger felt it already, but it took a few seconds from where we are purportedly thinking that the feeling is being actualized at, or that's where we are sensing it from, it took a couple of seconds for the brain to register and say, oh yeah, I felt it. For the man to say, oh, I felt it. Took a couple seconds, you know what I'm saying? Whereas when they touched the finger directly, he felt it automatically. 
So that means there is a something in between the brain and the body. The, the body is the formulation of the all energies. The brain is a receiver of the energies that formulates the body. The brain, we're going to read it right here. I wrote about it right here. So the brain is actually just an empty space that receives energy and is a is not the conduit. It's not. It's not. It's, it is a conduit, basically. That's all of it. The brain receives the energy. The higher self, or the higher realities, or what we would call higher realities, is conceiving the energy, birthing it, and the the um physical being or the personality perceives the energy as it's being um, broadcasted. So that body, the perceiver of the energy, the personality, had already been downloaded with the information. That's why the finger could already feel it. The brain was trying to interpret something that it had not been downloaded yet into it. Basically what is going on right there is we are getting energies, we're, we're getting information downloaded to us from um, the field. There's no time in the field. There's always now time. You know what I'm saying? No past, present, future. So the physical body being an interpretation or a representation of what's taking place in the field and it's here as it is, it um, already knew the download in the past, present, future thing because there is no time representation in the field. But when it, the brain was touched, it was delayed because it had not been downloaded the information the body already knew, you know, another, well, there's another uh, experiment, the heart experiment, where they um, hooked up subject, test subjects to EKGs, and they would observe, the scientists would observe um, the respira respiration, the, you know, the breathing patterns, as well as the, um, the blood flow to the heart. So, and what they was doing with the, in the experiment was they were showing random pictures. And some of the pictures would have um, uh, arousing emotional content. Some of them would be calming, you know. So what they noticed is when they showed the emotionally arousing content, the test subject would be with their respiration and their, um, and by way of the EKG or the heart, um, the heart stimulation will increase before they actually saw the emotional content or the emotionally filled um, picture. And their, their respiration will rise before they saw it, as well as when they saw common pictures, their respiration and their um, heart EKG would stay calm. So what they found out is that we will react to stimulus, the body reacts to stimulus before it even knows what's going to happen. Because we're connected to the energy that has already formulated everything that we're going through before it happens. So the body already, the heart already knows what picture is about to be shown before the physical eyes see the picture. So when we, when they went through that test, what happened is they would show these pictures, you know, people getting in car accidents, but three seconds before the picture was shown, the heart was already beating faster and the breath was already uh, starting to speed up. Versus when they showed a common picture of a baby smiling on sunshine. They were already calm three seconds before they saw the picture of the baby. So it showed, and they kept, they did this with hundreds of people, and it showed the same, um, it reflected the same way within the test. And what it, to them, what it proved is that um, basically the body knows by way of certain chemicals in the body and certain brain activity 
what's going to happen before it happens because it has already been downloaded to the body, the cells. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when we building up more light and going through certain certain exercises like with Qigong and Tai Chi and everything, uh, meditation, eating light food, whatever, these things like that, it builds up more light so that light is going to connect, you know what I'm saying, the hologram to the other side. So we'll be more attuned to um, our psychic abilities. All right, so you want to speak on those because basically it's, it's who sees, you know what I'm saying? So the same level of experience found in the universe as a whole can be found within the soul as well. The same level of being, the same divine hierarchies found in the non-material, etheric, astral, and elevated overtones of the universe as a whole can be found within the soul as well. This realization of being a mirror of the macrocosm is central to unfold all mystical processes. This whole process circles around the magnetic axial pole of pure being. The principle of macrocosm and microcosm, which represents the mirroring of levels, is the foundation of all spiritual and metaphysical traditions. As a, whole, as a whole can be found within the soul as well. The realization well, the same levels of being, same divine heart is found in the non-material, etheric, astral, and elevated overtones of the universe as, as a whole can be found within the soul as well. This realization of being a mirror of the macrocosm is central to unfold all mystical processes, alchemy. This whole process circles around the magnetic axle pole of pure being. The principle of macrocosm and microcosm represents, represents and represents the mirroring of levels is the foundation of all spiritual and metaphysical traditions. From the development of stars to the collapse of galaxies, from our meek meditation practices to world affairs, everything in the universe affects and resonates with everything else. In the same manner, our own spiritual practice and level of consciousness affect and resonate in all the planes of existence in the universe. This is also a reminder that how strange the universe may seem to us, we and it share one nature, one life, and one energy, the hidden light of infinite intelligence. The indivisible dual self, then, is understood in mystical terms as a reflection of the whole universe. In the same levels we have traced in the universe as a whole can be traced in the soul as well. So in essence, our own level of intelligence projects outwardly the way we see and understand reality. So as I was saying earlier, we project our universe outwardly. What we think is going on externally actually takes place initially within our own think tank. Hold on. Let's see if I can get some here. So again, the higher self conceives, the physical brain receives the energy, and the personality mind perceives that energy into a physical reality. And that's what we see. So the brain is only a receiver of the energy. It's an empty space. The higher mind, if you want to call it the higher mind, but the true self is the portion of ourselves that basically conceives the information or births or creates or forms the information. And then the brain receives it and translates it or transduces it and gives that vibration to the physical mind, the physical brain. And then that's what we perceive as reflected reality. Now, what does that say? Okay. So basically, we have to remember we, as a physical mind or the um, of what we would call personality, we don't conceive ideas or or basically even the 
the aspect of what we would call um, creative um, output. We are, you know, basically, that's why the muse was there. Like in olden time, they say the muse would come and, and uh, give uh, some type of dance or whatever to the one who would like to create some type of a poem or music or whatever it may be. But they, they would um, pretty much influence them and give them, give them that, uh, that juice to be able to do that because it's not coming forth from the indivisible dual self holistically. The ego has, or the personality has the perception to bring it into the form of the physical reality, yet it is not the conceiver or the one that is forming and birthing it from the higher planes or from the spiritual reality. That is something that we are connected to, but it is not us in that manner as far as the physical or the physical body is concerned, or the physical mind, the perception, or the personality. We don't create the ideas. We bring the ideas from the unknown to the known. When, when you know, I make music and stuff, I know that the music ain't coming forth from my personality as far as who I am by name and form. I know that it's coming from another realm of existence. When, when the poet writes the poem, the poet is only to can do it. The poem is really telling the poet what to write. The poet is not writing the poem. When I write music, I'm not. I'm, I'm getting that from somewhere else. When we when we do these creative things, we're getting it from somewhere else. It's not being conceived by the perception of the ego or the personality. The, all right. So um, we have been conditioned since the onset of our physical birth that. The world we live in is an outright material reality. So we develop from the basis of this viewpoint and structure our entire life around this condition. Modern science is now rediscovering that what the ancient masters of antiquity knew more than 25,000 years ago, that the material world is composed of fine sublime elements that wrap together and create the fabric of life. All the information that we observe is transported to us by way of our five senses, sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. Man, M-A-N, becomes reliant on these five senses at birth and, turn only, and in turn only knows the external reality that is offered to him through these five senses. Scientists perform different tests on our senses, revealing new facts about the external world, our senses, and matter. Frederick Bester was a German scientist and contemporary thinker. His explanation, in his explanations that man is merely an image and everything experiences is temporary and deceptive, and this universe is a shadow, is now being revealed in the present day. I don't know what I'll be doing. In his explanation, the man is mainly image and everything is good. To gather a stronger understanding on this idea, let's look at our most valuable sense, the sense of sight which in essence allows us to gain very detailed information about the external reality. The process of seeing is comprehended step by step. In the incidents of seeing, in the incident of seeing light clusters called photons journey from the eye to the eye, then pass through the eye lens and is refracted from the folk, then is refracted, then focused in the retina at the back of the eye. Within the retina, photons converted into electrical signals where neurons transmit these signals to the center of vision in the back of our brain. The act of seeing takes place in this center. All the images and experiences that we view and participate with are actually experienced in this small space of a few cubic centimeters. When we say we see something, we are actually observing the photons being converted into electrical signals in our brain. The brain, in essence, is sealed to light, and the interior of the brain is absolute darkness. So the physical brain has no capability of having contact with light. For instance, 
when there is a candle lit in front of us, the inside of our skull and our brains are in complete darkness. The inside of our brain and our center of vision is never illuminated by the light of the candle. This also implies that all the other senses as well, sound, taste, touch, and smell, are all perceived in our brain as electrical signals. Our brains don't meet the original matter that exists in the external world, yet an electrical copy that is formed inside our brain. At this point is where conditioning takes place and memories are forgotten of past lives and experiences. Because remember, all this is stored in the medulla amagata. The medulla amagata is also reflective of uh, the Kasha records, and that's where all past lives and experiences are stored. So we're getting all this information put in that and located into that area. This is where we begin to believe that the copies formed by electrical signals are real matter formed outside of us. Everything we touch, see, smell, hear, taste, and conceive is matter from the macrocosmic universe to the microcosmic atom are electrical signals in our brain. When we view an object from the external reality and truth, this object is not outside of us yet in our brain. The light particles or photons, on the infinite path of the sun from heaven to earth, are gathered by our eyes, then converted into electrical signals that are transmitted by neurons and transferred to our center of vision. If by chance the sight nerves were disconnected, we would no longer see the object. The same rule would apply if the nerves for hearing was disconnected. The objects we see, the sounds we hear, the feelings, the taste, and the smells are basically the brain or the 12 cranial nerves connected to the palmar gland. Interpretation of the electrical signals introduced into the brain. When we observe the external reality, we assume that we are viewing something outside of us and that our physical body is participating within this superficial reality. Yet in truth, our body is also an image formed inside our brain. That's that two-dimensional black dot that's forming a third-dimensional reality by way of light and um, time and space or the mind. The only reality that we conceive is the conceptual perception that we view without, I mean, that we view within our mind. To imagine matter as having an existence outside of the mind is only the physical illusion of reality diverting our attention, spiritual life, energy, and motion from the internal reality and therefore is at the utmost of deception. The matter or matur, true light, balance light, the light of the Lord of life, balance, ball, ankh, that we observe is in essence formulated and created from within our mind by way of our interconnection with external light external melanin, dark matter, and internal light, internal melanin, dark energy. So again, the matter or matter, true light, the matter that we observe is in essence formulated and created from within our mind by way of the interconnection of external light, dark matter, and internal um, melanin, dark energy, and it has been stated in cognitive um, thought that the brain can be allegorically called an organic computer. So, for example, let's say we are downloading electrical signals of images, sounds, smells, feelings, and taste to our senses that our organic computer downloads as true information, including our image, our own image. In essence, these are genetic patterns that reside within our DNA or programs internally, not so much the physical images or what we may relate to as being produced by parents. Okay, I'm going to look for something real quick right here that pertains to what we were just talking about. Uh, I had it a second ago. Okay, here it is. Here. So say for instance, uh, like we're saying, organic computer. But say for instance, we take our brain out and we plug it up to a computer. Or you know, science is the way they do this. They, they take the brain, so they plug it up to uh, like a hard drive or a CPU or a central processing unit. And then they download all type of information into the brain. Even though it's just the gray matter, it's just the brain. As long as there's some type of information going into that brain, it's going, 
think that whatever's going on from the CPU into the brain is reality because it's electrical signal going into the brain and then that brain is going to be having these whatever electrical signals so telling it it is in physical reality it's going to be forming inside the brain of the one that is um, or inside the brain from the CPU as far as the doctor or scientist is concerned downloading all type of information in there even if it ain't real So that is the same with the organic computer. We are thinking that the things outside of us is real. We put a lot of weight onto it and we become attached to some of these activities when it's not real. You know, it's just input, electrical inputs, you know, but um, as we were speaking on last week, um, we produce these catecholamines from um, biochemical, these biochemical um, substances that are produced and excreted by the pineal gland. And these catecholamines are very, um, they're very powerful antidepressants, but they're feel-good hormones, they make us feel good, you know, so certain memories get stored and um, are also regenerated due to the feel-good type of uh, reaction that is observed physically. And melanin loves it, you know, so it might not be a good activity, so to speak, but we get caught up on it. But there's so many different activities physically that we have now, again, in this information age that we participate with, that we get lost in our, on our way sometimes and we forget the process that we are here for. And um, that's basically knowledge itself, you know, there it is. So the question now posed is who or what is the perceiver? Hold up. Make sure I'm going in the right direction here. Yeah, so for example, let's say we are downloading electrical signals, images, sounds, smells, feelings, and taste to our senses that our organic computer downloads as true information, including our own image. In essence, these are genetic patterns that reside within our DNA or our programs. Remember, the cellular membrane is uh, similar to uh, information processor. They call it the um, liquid crystal, uh, what is it, liquid crystal um, semiconductor with gauging channels in science. So this liquid crystal, basically, liquid crystal would be equivalent to the hidden light. The hidden light is basically melanin or the darkness that cannot be seen by the physical eye, the unknown. The known aspect of it would be the changing gauges. Changing gauges means shifting. So melanin or the liquid crystal is shifting uh, and transducing energies um, by way of the semiconductor product process. And if I got that book, that will be on point. I don't have it right now, let's... Uh, I need to bring it with me. It's all good. Oh, yeah. Maybe I Yeah, Dr. Richard King. Uh-huh. I think I do. I think I get... I just, yeah, um, Why Darkness Matters by Edward Bruce Bynum, Nancy Brown, Dr. Richard King, Dr. Terrell, I mean, uh, Tim Owens, more. But the definition for semiconductor is a substance that is capable of carrying energy as an efficient rapid flow of electrons. All right. Also, superconductor, the flow or superconductivity is the flow of electrical current without the usual resistance of most metals, alloys, and other substances. It usually occurs at very low temperatures, but also perhaps at room temperature in biological systems. So um, melanin has the capability of being a superconductor or a semiconductor. But what they said the cell is, the cell is a liquid crystal semiconducting, um, semiconductor with gauging channels. So that semiconductor with gauging channels, that's, that's melanin, the liquid crystal. You know what I'm saying? But they said, but that's also been... Uh, defined as an information processor as far as like um, a CPU is concerned, a central processing unit. So that liquid crystal um, 
semiconductor with gauging channels is the same thing as a, a central processing unit. Our cell does all that, but within this, this, this uh, CPU or the cell is the nucleus. The nucleus is, can be uh, um, defined as basically the, um, the hard drive where information is stored. The DNA is the programs that is residing within the hard drive. And again, the semiconductor is a substance that is capable of carrying energy as efficient as an efficient as energy like a, an efficient rapid flow of electrons. Electrons are the building blocks of atoms. You know what I'm saying? But then the atoms turn into molecules and molecules turn into cells and life. So we are able to, to move those atoms around and do whatever we want to. We got some atoms over here that's causing some problems in the body, you don't like it move them over here and put them in a good part of the body where we get some good ones and we put them over there on the bad side. Next thing you know, bada bam, bada boom, whatever, um, that culture dish is, is created into a healthy reality where, where we, okay, um, looking into the dream state in contrast to the waking state, when in the dream state, we, we see, we hear, and can feel, yet it is what we deem as a fantasy or dream. Yet in still, when we arise from the dream state, we are still connected to the same senses in different degrees. You know what I'm saying? In the dream state, we are at times relaxed and at ease, seeing that we are connected to the same force or energy in both realities, just the inner peace. It is highly possible that the physical reality can also be developed and converted and transmitted to be more suitable to our true heart's intent due to this external reality being nothing more than an altered interpretation of the electrical signals or light that resides within our dream state as well as within our subatomic, atomic, molecular, and cellular structures, the uniting of space-time. All physical experiences and objects are naturally conceptual perceptions, including our brain and body. So again, that two-dimensional uh, flat surface being exuded with, well, as the light and um, sound exudes over into the mind and out of the mind, and, and that light is focused or refocused off of that two-dimensional surface, it produces the third-dimensional reality. So all things, all physical experiences and objects are naturally conceptual perceptions, the, the naturally conceptual perceptions that come from the mind. Remember, the higher mind or the true mind, the true self, is the conceiver, con concepts. You know what I'm saying? Concept means um, brain or mind, means head, basically, to come from the head. All right, so conceive means to form or create. So the true self is the conceiver. The brain, the physical brain or whatever, um, is the receiver of the energies that are conceived by the true self. So as the true self flows the energy and it steps down into the brain and we receive it, it is then perceived by the perceiver or the perception, the ego or the body, the thinker, I mean the doer. The thinker is the brain, the thoughts, that's Tahuti. Tahuti takes the energy from Ra, and then as it steps down, he transduces that energy into wisdom to where we can understand it. And that's how Ra, or Amin Ra, Aten Ra, Atim Ra, again, Atim, Tom, Tim. So when Atim, the no thing, or that no nothing, or that non-state, then it's being actualized into a physical state by way of tahuti or thut, thought. That's where we get the word thought from. So by way of the thought, the, the thought or tahuti transduces it into or shifts it by way of, you know, melanin transduces energy. So it tr transduces the vibration to a sound and the heat into a light to where it's perceived or where the personality can, you know, per sign means through sound, where the personality can now be able to 
have the availability of that wisdom actualized in our perceptions. All right, so all physical experiences are obviously naturally conceptual perceptions, including our brain. So it's folded over the darkness, folds over off that the light folds over off the, the dark um, two-dimensional space and forms a third-dimensional reality by way of that light and sound from um, fifth dimension, like we was talking about earlier. And then we get what we got here. The question now posed is who or what is the perceiver or the architect of the will, the intent, that hears, sees, touches, and perceives, tastes, and smells? Who is it that thinks, reasons, and has feelings, emotions, and clarity enough to recognize knowledge itself? Ken Wibbler uh, stated in Holographic Paradigm, page 37, that since the Greeks, philosophers have been thinking about the ghost in the machine, the small man within the small man. Where is I, the person who realizes the act of knowing? As St. Francis of Assisi said, what we search for is the one who sees. The fact of the matter is, the metaphysical being that utilizes the brain for experience is the soul. This is the hidden light of the infinite intelligence. That's that black dot. The material reality is an actuality and adaptation of, of perception that is gathered by the soul. The bodies we possess as well as the universe we so-called exist in have no middle or are in truth empty space having no physical reality. The complete or Tim being the complete being is our soul. This is the intelligence, the initiatory spark, the fire or point that expanded outward into the known physical body and universe. Matter consists of perceptions viewed by the knower thinker and the doer, the trying self. This is the spark of life, the soul. I'm, I'm coming with some info. We know that a lot of people don't really touch on this stuff like to talk about. Um, they either don't know, don't show, or don't care about what's going on in the ghetto. You know what I'm talking about? So it's like if they even looked at it, they probably going to shun it like, hell no, fuck physics or quantum physics. I mean, but when we go back into indigenous mystery systems, that's what it was based on. Knowledge itself is not talking about a physical self where it's represented by who my mom and daddy was and where I come from on a physical plane. Knowledge itself is taking one's physical existence appreciatively, having love for it, but not falling into an infatuation state of it to where we're lusting after the physical reality. So therefore we can go about our walk and gain more knowledge of self by transducing, again, by way of Tahuti or thought, the proper information. You know what I'm saying? So quantum physics, again, when we talk about quantum or quanta, we're talking about the fifth element or the fifth essential, fifth essence. So that's intelligence, that's spirit. Quantum physics, they may not say that's what they're talking about, but basically, you know, I've, heard, I've heard some of the quantum physics that can say it, though. It's a, it's a spiritual reality that everything is coming from. But what that means is basically this electron, this, you know, these quarks and everything that's within this electron and all these leptons and all this other stuff that's taking place inside of this they have a infinite reality as well as infinite potential. You know what I'm saying? So when we're looking at this reality as a physical matter-based reality, then we lose touch of um, and lose sense of our true nature. Remember, the higher nature or the true self is conceiving all of this, and it's not localized physically here. You know what I'm saying? That black dot, that Mercury bar, that um, our common history of man, you know what I'm saying? To, to daily unite um, the known and unknown mysteries. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the antimatter and that matter combining as one and formulating that Mercury bar with that pure energy. And that's how we gain enlightenment, basically. When we are con we are here, yet we notice and we are co connected to that unseen, unknown mystery as well. 
You know what I'm saying? The greatest mystery of man is that he is God. You know what I'm saying? Or basically, man is mine. And man being derived from his own intuitive state, or we initiated from our own state inside of our own mind, each individual, indivisible dual self is their own soul creator, their own holographic expression. Each one of us are a dot or a black hole within this universal type of a, well, within the ultimate universe, the ultimate reality on the other side of this. There was 144,000, the first fruits that are like the embers that sparked off of that uh, Big Bang from the other side. You know, all that, when that fire, air, water, and, um, and material earth or whatever all collided into one and that noise, kalaka. You know, kalaka means uh, creation in the shirt. But they say that was the first sound of the universe, kalaka, kalaka. When everything um, joined together and exploded outwardly. But those first sparks, those first fruits are the uh, sons and daughters of the most high. You know what I'm saying? It says it's 144,000. You know, send it um float around in the universe and do what it do. Basically, like it's the 144 vortices that are, are located on the planet Earth. And these vortices are vortexes, they're portals. You know what I'm saying? So these portals are connected to 144,000 energies that are physical as well. You know, so um this goes on and on forever, though. This it, is it's a one-day thing type thing. But we, uh, when we go, when we come through the portal of mother, it's an experience of forgetfulness or amnesia. You know, am uh, meaning mind, and asia means to or it means land as well. So the mind, the land of mind, but uh, inside of me, I mean inside of Amnesia is neat, so that means to negate or to go away from, to take away from. So basically, it's to lose the mind of the land or of, of the natural state, the indigenous state. So we we have a state of amnesia that we have went through. Asia again, or Asia, meaning the land, or, or a physical being, but we've lost our, our land, and the land is also equivalent of our natural state of being, not just from here, physically, but elsewhere. So the laws of physics, chemistry and biology are now leading to the fact that matter consists of empty space and is essentially an illusion. And in fact, it is of a metaphysical reality. So metaphysical, when you flip that word, it's atom, atom. Meta means beyond. But when we're looking at that word meta and we flip it around, we have Atim. And Metatron is the deity of the um the highest realm of the Kabbalic Kabbalic uh Kabbalist uh tree of life or whatever, the Pat Natir Kemetic mystery system. The, but the uh, in the Kabbalah uh, Metatron, also Kether. Or you know, saying meaning Kether meaning crown of light, the Metatron. When you flip the whole word Metatron around, if it was T R O N, you would have Nut Atim or Natir Atim. So Metatron is basically a play on words of the divine um, non-being. You know, what I'm saying so, time, the noun time. That is, um, again, metaphysics. Now, Tom, it, metaphysics, to me, is a, is a language. Um, it's a reorganization of the physical language that we have to where we, um, we shift and transduce it into a, a, a higher representation or a more enlightened, enlightening representation in place of what they give us. So we like metaphysics, we flip it to atom, but then we got atom. 
but metaphysics means away from the physical. Also, quantum physics is talking about the fifth element of physical reality, the spirit, the intelligence. So basically, metaphysics and quantum physics is the same thing. Just talking, so quantum physics is basically the applied science of metaphysics. You know, so metaphysics is the applied spiritual science. Quantum physics is the applied physical science. 